Check, check, check. A, B, C, one, two, three. Vocals are looking good. All right, let's get rolling. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend and uh, hope you had some good rest and was able to really, uh, if you had a good or bad week, really make sure you spend some time relaxing because it's, you know, it's it's your your reward for a week of trading. Uh, we're going to talk through what's going on in the markets this week. Um, for those of you who've been following some of the news that's going on on Twitter across the board, I love Twitter. I think it's a fantastic news source now. Um, there's, of course, the rockets that were fired in Israel and from from Iran and, uh, you know, that kind of a scare. So that's probably going to um, impact the markets a bit. Um, so I, I, th I do think that um, there's going to be plenty of room to the upside still. And I think that these types of scares generally build in a lot of really interesting uh, input. So uh, we're going to take a look at the markets nevertheless and see what we can find out and go from there. So let's head over there right now. Hey, what's up, Kirk? How you doing, Ben? Kirk, how you doing? Good to see you, man. Hope you had a good weekend, brother. Um, okay, cool. Uh, with that, let's go over the economic calendar and, uh, we see that this week, so this particular end of the month is there's a really important event happening on the weekend of May 1st. So we have the FOMC federal funds rate. Every, um, looks like OBS keeps on dropping frames, which is very bizarre. So let's try this again. Hello. Hello. Am I back? No, this is still disconnecting. Why is this disconnecting? OBS, stop doing this to me. Okay. Can anybody still hear me? Am I still connected? Let me check if I'm still live. Oops. Okay, good. It looks like I'm still live, which is good. All right, sorry about that. Hey, stock trader zero zero. Sorry about this. My my internet. I think there's something going on with OBS when I start streaming. Something goes on where it drops packets and drops frames. So, if I disconnect, I apologize. Um, LP trades. Hey, good to see you, brother. All all great names that are recognized. Okay, good, good. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so let's try to get through this as quickly as possible so that I can get you um, input on where I think the meeting's going to go or the week's going to go. Obviously, with Jerome Powell speaking on Wednesday, or sorry, 2 4, so afternoon session, um, be careful in the morning of this session. You have uh, a Fed speaker at 1, you've got a couple of Fed speakers, you got a Fed speaker at 9 in the morning. So I anticipate Tuesday is going to be a little bit of a rocky day. Um, uh, so, I mean, just you, we all know what happens when Jay Powell speaks. The market will take that and move with very, very big uncertainty as to which way it'll move. So the algos pick up on this heavily. So if you're trading on Tuesday, don't try to trade with max leverage on when Jerome Powell speaks. I think that... Um, maybe afternoon session will be a little bit easier once the algos are done picking up on what he says. And then of course we have fed speakers on Wednesday. Don't expect there to be too much if you're not done trading in the morning because everything's going to lead up to unemployment claims this week. So Thursday, you're going to see the major volatility. Um, and uh, that particular day, you've also got existing homes can truly lead to a bit of volatility as well. So nothing happening on Friday this week. Um, let me check just to make sure. Let me check. So Friday, uh, Chicago president, Austin Goolsby speaks at 10 30 AM. So there's nothing really crazy on Friday 
I imagine the brunt of your volatility is going to happen uh, in the in the Tuesday Thursday kind of time frame. So um, we'll see what profile this this allows us to provide. But with the war sentiment over the previous few days, I think that that's going to shake a lot of people out. We saw Bitcoin move kind of crazy to the downside, and then it got bought up again. I believe it's um, you know, a lot of really interesting moves within these assets, right? So uh, if you follow crypto, that was a really interesting one that got bought up really quickly. So let's head over to the charts and see what we can find out. We know what's happening during the economic calendar, so you can kind of derive your weekly profile from that. Um, so we'll see. Right now we've started up, and let me pull over one of the charts here so we can take a closer look okay so um i might as well pull up dollar as well because that one's a fun one to look at ahead of time so all right so let me pull over the dot let me pull over the dollar index here so we're going to take a look at dollar first to see what direction it's moving in so from a quarterly perspective it's reaching a rejection block up here which it could still reject from um but We'll see if it actually does that. So 106, 674, I think you can still head higher to reach for that. Um, let's take a look at the week so far. So far on the week and the day, it has started to started by going a little bit lower first. So remember, if we're anticipating a weekly candle to continue higher, oops, this is what I would be looking for. I'd be looking for it to head to somewhere around this area here. This is a rejection block on the on the on the weekly chart. Happens to be there on the monthly chart as well, a little bit higher. This all day. Um, let me see if I can grab grab this one and drop it a little bit higher. So I like monthly levels better than weekly levels, but you can kind of see that it does have room to expand higher on that monthly. What does that mean? I would expect the weekly candle to drop down, taking us higher during the some part of the week, and then seeing this candle expand higher to at the very least take out, and let me duplicate this here so we can see this on the weekly, take out this buy side liquidity on the weekly, and then this buy side liquidity on the monthly. So those are a couple of things I expect dollar to do. I expect it to expand in that direction. Um, we've closed above the midpoint of this bearish old bearish order block. So I I think that while we could retrace all the way down to potentially this bullish order block, I think that we're going to end up heading towards this mitigation block on the weekly at least. So what does that mean for us on the daily chart on the DX, dollar X, DXY, right? We've closed above. So this high here was uh, 106.006. We have closed at 106.013. So we closed higher than this uh, area here and then sold off towards the end of the day. So it would be wise for us to consider a movement higher this week. And uh, sorry, a movement lower on dollar this week, potentially down into this fair value gap. Uh, we've already made it above this premium monthly inversion fair value gap that we pointed out a long time ago. So remember this to this, we were assuming that this was a inversion fair value gap and it almost treated it as such until we saw it continue and see strength for the dollar. So what does that mean now? That means that there's a higher likelihood of us expanding towards this uh, daily inversion fair value gap here. So we have this high to this low. And what we can do is drag this all the way over there. So that liquidity void, actually, let me get this correctly there. So this liquidity void here, that is what I'm expecting price to draw towards now. So, so this liquidity void on dollar that's over here, I expect us to draw up to that price. Now, what does that mean for the dollar? That means we go higher on the dollar. What does that mean for indices? That means the expansion for the week 
in my opinion, is going to be up higher unless we shoot higher and hit this first. Then I would expect us to see a bit of a retracement back into a potential previous uh, uh, open at a dynamic buy side imbalance here. So that's what we're framing on the dollar. Um, this should support uh, as long as dollar has not hit that key level yet, that should support dollar going higher overall this week. So I'll be looking for if we continue to head higher this week, I would be looking for for indices to um, maybe head higher first and then um, go down after the end of the week. So a uh, couple things here. Let's open up our... Let's take a look at the one minute time frame here so we can kind of gauge, let's see, 1801, 1700. Okay, so let's do one thing here. Let's go grab, um, I'm gonna grab an old, an old marker over here. And let's go down to that one minute time frame and draw out our new week opening gap. All right, so we have this close here, right? 1700. And then we have this open um, way down at 18,151. So let's create that. 18,151. Oh, whoops, that was 18,151.75. So let's make sure we have that on our charts. And then this close was 18,171.50. Or is that right? Hold up. 18,173 was the open here. But that should be the close. On oh no, I disconnected again. Ah, OBS. All right. It said OBS disconnected, and I'm back. Please stop dropping me, OBS. Please, please, please stop dropping me. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Okay, so let's continue. So um, we have this new week opening gap now, and let's take a look on the weekly chart. So uh, this is our weekly chart. We we see that we've we're still in that weekly consolidation range above the previous all time high, and uh, we're sticking in that range for the time being. You can kind of see how we've made this short term low, this higher short term low, and we didn't quite break through this short term low here. So uh, that actually makes this a another short term low that's higher than this one here. So this is the one to watch now. Uh, because if we break through that and we break through that one, that's going to be quite bearish on on, on my, in my mind. It would have to close through it. It would have to break through and close this week in order for me to be bearish um, and truly bearish on that. So far, we've started the week heading upwards. And every single one of these candles that ended up selling off started the week heading upwards, right? We opened. We traded higher. We sold off. And then we returned. We opened, traded higher, we sold off, and then returned. So similarly, each one of these candles was a big green candle at some point right around here. And then it turned into a sell-off. So I am going to be considering that this is going to turn into something similar, but I'm expecting it to potentially bounce here. Um, this is a really important low, 18,006. So watch that one really closely. And of course, the BS. I am so sorry. This keeps on disconnecting. I need to figure out why. But unfortunately, it's really difficult to troubleshoot why OBS keeps on dropping frames. Um, yeah, it's just it's really, really kind of annoying. But it's the best streaming tool, supposedly, out there. So... I don't know what's going on. I'll have to play around with this afterwards. So anyways, we are trading up within this same dealing range. So 
in this dealing range here from down here to up here so right now technically we are in a discount no don't drop frames don't drop frames obs what are you doing to me okay all right now it's back all right, so we're still within this year, and if we take a look at what that dealing range is, let's look at it from a swing grade perspective, so we know where these um, levels are. So halfway through this is here. We've already traded up down to a discount level, traded up back to a premium. We're down back down at a discount, trading up towards equilibrium so um my thoughts here are that we 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 don't have a clear direction as to what direction we're going to go yet we have key events happening on tuesday and on thursday which could spike us all the way back up or it could help us take even take out even more um recently there's a sentiment out there that there might not be two rate cuts this year it might just be one so markets might be pricing that in as well. Um, so we'll see. I mean, at the end of the day, what we're going to wait for is we're going to see if the Biden administration decides that they're going to print some more money. If Jay Powell is going to say, hey, you know, inflation wasn't transitory. Oops, let's print some more money and and continue handling it by printing more money then we're going to see us have a wild ride to the upside because there's a lot of people positioning short here, right? So uh, let's see. It's not going to... LP Trade says it's not going to be any. Oh, maybe not, but we'll see. So anyways, you can't tell much yet on this one, but you want to either see how it trades within these candles here. Um, it is smack dab in the middle of this dealing range. So again, it's going to be quite difficult to discern what's going to happen. So again, uh, I think like I mentioned on previous weeks, where is it? Uh, I can't find it. Oh, I know it's on my other chart, but um, like I mentioned on previous weeks, scalping protocols are still in play. Uh LP Trades says they announced last time they are going to be reducing the amount of quantitative tightening. Um, yeah, yeah, right. So it's going to be really troublesome for inflation if that happens. If there's more QE, quantitative easing, um, markets will go up until they absolutely can't go up anymore. It's going to be a crazy, crazy time. Um uh, something that we've never seen before, where the U.S. is in a really, really bad position, honestly. Um, but what can other countries do to to stem that, right? Uh, we might see a situation where the dollar is getting, getting like, stagnated. But inflation's rising. Costs of things are rising. People and money printed. Liquidity is rising as well. So... There's going to be a lot of stuff that uh, is going to be out there. So um, so anyways, let's take a look at the charts. Let's take a look at the four-hour chart here. Um, Darius Tensei, great analysis. Yeah, just these are all things you have to pay attention to. Like if you're not interested in these things, and don't get me wrong, when I first started, I thought you could just trade and not worry about, not pay attention to economics and things that are out there. But it's actually kind of fun to see and make 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 some of these connections over time, right? So, um, pay attention to these. It's 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 quite important. And get on Twitter. Make sure you're on Twitter, and you can always follow me there. I'm not really posting as much. I'm I just let the people who are like you know the news folks post, but getting a sense of what's happening, what the overall sentiment is, very important. The rates just won't be touched. I think. Yeah. I I. I think there's going to be less than, I don't think there's going to be two rate cuts. I, I really don't. So um, if they cut rates and they do more quantitative, you know, if they do more quantitative easing, 
um, get ready, folks. It's going to be a, a a wild ride. Shorts are going to get squeezed, and it's going to probably create more all-time highs for a short period of time. So um, that being said, even though we are... And, and and that's why I want to see dollar. We're going back to dollar. I want to see dollar go back here because what does that mean then? If dollar goes back and takes out this high but doesn't create like a new big run to the upside, maybe it comes up into this sell side imbalance, takes a bit and then sells off again, then what will happen is as we zoom out further, let's go to the monthly chart. We can kind of see how dollar, every time it got up to a key point and started to drop, it came back up to an internal range of liquidity and then took out an external range of liquidity. So we, like this could be a major dollar. Like if they start printing, then we might see dollar continue to drop kind of like it did in, um, in 2020 and 2021 when they were really uh, dealing with some quantitative easing there, right? Um, I forget when they announced printing, but um, sometime around post-COVID, right? So we're going to see what happens there. But for the time being, let's take a look at the technical charts. So four-hour chart, we've risen first in the beginning of a week. Um, taking a look at what happened in the first on that first candle of last week, uh, we also rose and then we started to sell off a bit. And then we kind of like had a horrifying first like first couple of days, right? So this was a really brutal set of days. If you were trading Monday and Tuesday of last week, oh, it was a very brutal time. Um, you can see by the length of these wicks, it was not deciding what direction it wanted to go in, right? So, so that being said, um, I like to keep roughly five or so. I'm going to get rid of these actually because there's plenty of other new week opening gaps to refer to. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. So we have this new week opening gap, old ones, one, two, three, four, and then five being the current one. So I anticipate that we could end up uh, continuing our consolidation by targeting either this SIBI or this SIBI. I like this SIBI more in general. Primarily because it's sandwiched right next to a bearish order block. So I like this sell side imbalance better. And I would like for price to potentially at some point if it can. Now, if dollar decides it's going to run to the upside for some reason, um, we, not, we may not get up there, right? So we typically like to see, and let me go over to the daily chart if if we see that we have a movement higher and the movement lower generally you will find at you will find that we oh did I disconnect again so so you'll find, and let me get rid of this box here that shows the dealing range here. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Okay, so uh, let me get rid of this box as well. That was one of our previous dealing ranges. Okay, so within this previous daily candle, you can kind of see this is a fully balanced range. We've seen price, we've seen price trade down, up, down, up, down through it. So if we are going to be bearish, like if we see dollar rise up towards that key level and then start to sell off, um, at the very least, we would we would expect that um, my if my other chart would actually load, we would expect dollar to drop a little bit while this is rising, and then. I mean, maybe maybe it drops just a little bit for it, enough for us to trade within this bottom quadrant, and then if it hits that, um, I I don't know. It's it's dollar has been kind of decoupled from price for quite some time here. Um, remember, if you remember, dollar rose three days in a row, 
And generally, generally, you see dollar when dollars rising, you see that we see indices like NASDAQ, ES, YM, you see those drop. In the previous three days, 411 and 412, 413, sorry, 410, 411, 412, you see that we dropped, we completely obliterated it, the drop, and then we completely sold off that entirety of a drop as well. So you can kind of see how um, dollars past three days were not the same. So dollar continued to rise in general. So remember that day where we completely rose? Dollar was doing this. Where, where, uh, here, right there. So dollar, oh, OBS. Come on, OBS, come back. Okay, I should be back now. Sorry about that. OBS disconnected again. All right, so on the daily chart, if we are expecting price to on dollar to head higher, we're expecting price on indices to head lower. Now, it might not happen. We saw that last week, so be very careful with this. On the four-hour chart, we know that there's a premium sell-side imbalance within this dealing range. If we take this swing high to this swing low, Uh, we have a 60 to 70% retracement within this sell side imbalance. So even though there's a higher one there, I may look for price to trade down to or trade up to only this area here because it has an optimal trade entry as well as other factors here as well. So these two I would have on my charts. Um, and then as well as equilibrium, there's no fair value gap that is on the four hour chart that's um, right at equilibrium. So we take the next available one, which is up here. So that's what I'll be aiming for in the first part of today and this week. And then of course, I like this 18,006. I think that when we start to see this drop, if we don't see, if we see this fail to head higher now, not saying Jerome Powell can't drop above, take take price all the way above all of these here. But I'm guessing if there are, if war sentiment is overblown and Jay Powell says something about rate cuts, then we could be aiming to take out these highs before we head lower. So we're always keeping in mind that we're still within this giant consolidation and that we could run for it. Oh, come on, LBS. Oh, man. This is really frustrating. I don't know why OBS is dropping so much. I mean, this is ridiculous. Let me try closing trading view or something. I don't really have any other programs that are up. Ninja Trader, Rhythmic. All right. I'm disconnected again. This is dropping frames like again. Gosh. Let me see if there's anything that can be done about this. OBS dropping frames. Um All right. I'm hope I'm hoping it's back now. Okay. All right. So anyways, um Let's go down to an hourly chart to see what that looks like here. So remember, on the four hour chart, we saw this as a potential dealing range that we're operating in right now, right? Let's see what that looks like on an hourly chart. So right now we've had a short term high. We've seen displacement on that high and we've seen us trade back down to this bullish order block. So um, it traded down to this bullish order block and then has instantly traded back upwards for this hour. And it looks like my, looks like my data is stale now. All right, let's try this again. Let me see if I'm still connected to YouTube. 
Okay, I'm reconnecting my data right now because they kicked me off of that. So uh, we should see the counter come back up once it reconnects. Again, I apologize for the inconvenience here. I don't know why OBS continues to drop frames, but I will try to figure that out after this live. I did upgrade update recently, so sometimes that has a factor when I update the computer drivers as well as OBS. So um, let's give this a moment to load and we should be on our way once more. Okay, still loading, so. Almost there. Do I see the counter yet? Not yet. Still loading. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's try and get through this. I'll try to make this as painstaking, as less painstaking as possible. So we see that a possible movement back up to equilibrium would put us right at a bearish order block. So it's not guaranteed that we will head up to this one. I think we we have the likelihood to do that, but there's no guarantee we'll head up to this one. But I'm that's what I'm looking for initially with this type of institutional order flow. So I'm expecting for us to head at least up to equilibrium. That would be my first target, uh, 18.312.56. If we're very, very bearish, then this will fail. This will fail because it's right at that 25% like movement from this previous day's range here. Um, it's right about at that 25% movement there. So um, let's get rid of this here. So you can kind of see from this daily high to this daily low, which is the new dealing range, 25% um, is right around here. If it's very bearish, it will not reach that 50% level. Even though ICT concepts say that you need to be in a premium to short and a discount to buy, there's a chance that it does not make it up there. So we need to watch Monday very closely and we need to see what's happening with price on Monday to give us an idea on if we're going to have a huge expansion lower first as we see dollar start to rise and then maybe it has it comes down and barely hits the 18,006 level or maybe gets close to it and then remains skyrocketing back up with dollar decides to sell off okay so while we have those four hour sell side imbalances in play, um, this hourly inversion fair value gap in a premium would be the highest priority one where you have the highest likelihood of it selling off. Um, and then of course, if it continues to head higher and just like for some reason, dollars tanking and Jerome Powell says, hey, we're gonna cut and everything starts to run, you'll aim for this relative equal high these relative equal highs and this sell side imbalance. Okay. On the hourly chart. So you need to be aware that those are there. You might not see those on your charts if you're zoomed in this far. So you need to be aware of those that it could head up there if there's a freak sell off on the dollar. So, um, so two scenarios we're looking for right now is we want to see if this buy side imbalance fails and it fails to head higher on Monday. Um, because if it does, then that signifies to you that, Hey, somebody wants to be bearish, right? Somebody wants to go short. So I'm going to wake up tomorrow and see if there's any, any sort of indication as to what direction it wants to go yet. And then I'll check to see what dollar is doing as well. So I recommend you do the same. So that's on the 60 minute chart. Um, again, we're watching that equilibrium point here at 18.312.50. On the 15 minute chart, we see even more here to play with, right? That 50% of this swing high to this swing low, that 50% mark is also a 15 minute uh, mean threshold of a bearish order block here. Um, which had and showed institutional order flow here. So 
if we get up to there and immediately fail, then that would be my indication to target this short, these relative equal lows here, this short term low here, and of course, eventually these lows here. Now remember, we had this low way over here. Look at how it got referred to here, here, and here. So it's important to have those levels on the lower time frames there um, because sometimes price might refer to those and you'll know exactly why. Of course, the larger one that we care about is this darker one here, that 18,006.25. That's the one that's really key. I, if I see that one barely turtle souped, I know price is going to head higher. If I see this one have price break all the way through and close, I know price is likely going to head lower. And what could it head lower for? Well, there are a 40 day IPTA low, so like this would be the next target, and there would be a low resistance liquidity run down here. So you see how I'm mapping out some of the things that could happen. Um, oftentimes when people say you need to have a bias, well, yeah, it's you, you need to have that, especially in a trending environment. But when we're in consolidation here, you must think about what's gonna happen on both sides. And like think about it in terms of a computer programmer where you're like, hey, if this happens, then do this. Otherwise, if this happens, then do that. Like you need to be able to frame and kind of imagine what you'll do if you see certain things occurring. And this is where backtesting comes into play really deeply because you start to recognize and say, hey, you know, I've seen this kind of pattern in consolidation in a discount before. And then you can start to put those things together and say, hey, I've seen this happen before. Let's see if it happens again. If so, I will look for a Wednesday or Tuesday, Wednesday kind of like expansion to the downside if I'm expecting dollar to head higher. So so that's how I'm framing the, framing the week. Um, I'm seeing if dollar is going to want to head higher eventually and we get an expansion lower. Uh, or do we get that, um, maybe we get, uh, clean unemployment claims that takes us all the way back up. I don't know. I mean, that's why we don't trade before news, but we can trade after news. We can look for targets that if they haven't been achieved yet, that we'll probably end up going for. So, so that concludes weekly prep for this week. Um, your goal is really, and let me zoom in here. It'll be easier to see your goal here on this weekly chart is to determine what direction are we going to trade? What's more likely for us? Is it more likely for us to trade higher given that these three have traded lower or is it more likely that we trade lower, tackle some sell side liquidity that's closer by first and then trade higher? That's what I'm thinking this week might hold. Um, or another, another option could be that it's an inside bar week and that we're just kind of coiling up. I think we're going to see a couple of those, especially leading up to May 1st. I think that we're going to see some inside bars, which means there's a lot of accumulation occurring, right? Cause see, notice how this candle here, this weekly candle was inside of this previous week's candle. This shows you that there's a giant expansion ready to occur. And we saw what happened in the following week. It traded all the way down here before getting bought up again. So I imagine we're going to see something similar as we get closer to uh, May 1st, which is when the rate announcement comes into play. So yeah, um, so that's what I'm thinking for this week. Uh, it's okay if you don't have that same bias as me. You know, I'm not... I, I'm not like all seeing, all hearing, you know, omniscient, but um, that's what I'm framing in my head. And that's why I'm framing it in my head because dollar is doing that. Um, because, you know, if we take a look at ES and so we're looking at the ES chart here. If we're looking at ES chart on the weekly, you know, it's recently it hasn't traded below a, a weekly short-term low yet because the, the earliest one is down here. Uh, but we've had a couple of down weeks there down into this bearish or bullish order block. And we've closed closer, but still below the midpoint of it. 
Um, on a monthly perspective, you can kind of see how we reached up, took out that other old school high. And now for ES, it seems more likely on the monthly perspective that we reach down for this buy side imbalance. Um, and let's take a look at the Dow. So this is the Dow. The Dow has also made it back to its all-time, essentially its all-time high, but um, it's already breached that, right, over here. So it's breached below that, and it's ready to close. So let's see, on the weekly chart, you can kind of see that it's also here. Um, it's, I mean, technically this, is, this should be up here, but um, it's well displaced below this already. So on the Dow, we've already seen a monthly close below a previous short-term low, right? So that leads me to believe that if you're going to trade short, then likelihood is that the trading the Dow is going to be the faster mover of these two because look at where ES is, right, on the monthly chart. And then go back to, let me move this over here. Going back to uh, NASDAQ, it's super similar, right, to the ES. It hasn't broken above this monthly level here or broken below this monthly level here. So it, I haven't seen a shift in market structure yet, but the Dow is the leader there. So um, you may want to monitor Dow if you're truly like an early short. I think that has the highest um, probability that it will continue and drop faster. Um, and then, of course, once we see either NASDAQ or ES do that, then we'll know that there's something occurring. Okay. All right, so um, I think that's going to be it. This is a nice little prep here. I hope this was helpful in terms of framing what on the higher time frame we're looking for. Uh, we're still not completely out of the clear that we could head higher, uh, meaning that Dow with a market structure shift to the downside on the monthly chart, it could just be a little red herring where it goes down faster than the others and then completely rebounds because of something that Jay Powell says because of a rate cut announcement. Um, we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of things that could happen. And likewise, on the flip side, if we see that there's no rate cut announcement or that they make an announcement saying that, hey, we no longer anticipate two rate cuts, but we anticipate one, that's still relatively bearish in nature because a lot of folks were trying to price in those two rate cuts. So um, so yeah, I think that is it for today. I hope this was helpful. And uh, any, any questions? Any questions on um, really anything that we talked about here? Is there anything, uh, questions from the audience there? Let me get rid of this here. And I will actually, actually I'll keep this here for the time being. I wanna mark the midpoint of this. Any questions here? We're going to mark this as a daily level, but we're going to make it a consequent encroachment here. Questions from the audience. So what I did there was I removed uh i'm gonna remove this and uh, you see that pink or purple dotted line now so you'll see that on all of my charts and that will indicate the midpoint of this daily range swing range lp trades how has your leverage been uh good good i am i can let me log in to double check my numbers here um, I can safely say that on the 50k accounts, I am now very comfortable with trading two to four micros and only those. Um, I can be, say, be safely safe to say that on the 150k accounts, um, I can trade anywhere from 10 micros and scale in and scale out as needed. Um, and I think right now, 
So I've got one 50K account that's at 1,900-ish, another's at 1,200-ish in profit, and then a third account's at 1,690 in profit, and then a fourth account's at 891 in profit. So yeah, slow and sure really does win the race in this. I've, I've kept these, I mean, these accounts have been live for months now. So um, I haven't had to need to get another performance account. I have five, um, I have what, three 150K accounts and two 50K accounts. So um, as long as you maintain 2% risk, if you really, really want to look like you're making money, one to 2% maximum is what you should be trading. No more than that. You don't need to. If you if you need that leverage, you're gonna end up blowing the account before your trailing stop loss occurs, right? So, uh, so so far so good. I anticipate we'll end up getting a payout. I don't want to get a payout directly at once I break fifty thousand one hundred. I would like to wait. Oh, maybe at fifty two thousand one hundred, I'll request a five hundred dollar payout, and then. Each 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 time, if I have a target of like one thousand dollars, I'll I'll aim to trade a thousand above that, like the the equivalent amount above that, at least one thousand. So, um, so if I want a thousand dollars payout, I'm gonna aim to pay to trade to you know plus two thousand dollars. If I want a two thousand dollar trade out payout, I'm gonna aim to at least trade to four thousand dollars above that. So double, right? I got my first payout and blew the account. Oh no, I <laughs> know I've done that before. I did that on the early days of uh, Apex when it was much harder to uh, get these accounts. So at least you got your payout though, LP. Um, congratulations. I think that's a really great, uh, it's a great accomplishment and you should be very proud of that. It's not easy with Apex uh, to to tr trade and to to it's it's far it's even less easy when you blow the account right, so at least you got some money out of the um, after the out of the payout, and you should certainly be proud of that man. That I'm proud of you man. That's awesome. Yeah, that's incredible. So, um, yeah, I've gotten to the point where passing the evaluations is very simple. Um, I, I've made multiple videos about that, but what I'm more proud about is that risk management is the micromanagement. Um, leverage will happen. I've come to realize that very, very quickly. As long as you can learn how to trade these low accounts first, if you can trade the smaller accounts, there's no reason why you're not going to be able to trade the larger accounts. Like, honestly, there's no reason you'll, you'll easily be able to, to, to make it back up there. So, um, yeah, yeah. Good questions though. Very, very good questions. All right. Well, I don't have anything else for you and it's getting to the time when I need to start to floss my teeth and drink some water and wind down. So, um, I think good luck this week, everyone. I hope you have a phenomenal week this week and I hope that you are able to trade safe, knowing what's happening with the economic calendar, knowing that there's going to be some global events this week that are currently ensuing uh, based on the items happening over in Tehran and Israel. So WEF, thanks, Johnny. Hey, appreciate that. Oh, by the way, um, something that uh, if for those of you that didn't know or haven't, maybe you don't even care about this and that's fine. But I released two more videos uh, in this, and they're in the 2024, uh, 2024 lessons playlist here. But I released two videos. One is the struggling with risk management and passing prop, uh, prop accounts. This is a lot more so on the mental and the. Well, let me pause this real quick. So this is a video that goes through some of the mental things and some of the overall trading gaps that I had to finish and take uh, take control of before I was consistently profitable. And I think I've had like a bunch of green weeks here, but there was one person who um, recently came and watched this video. Some of you may recognize this person. He's real Raha Banks. Um, he's a really great YouTuber. He trades gold a lot. And um, 
yeah, he was he was watching the channel, and I thought that that was really cool. Uh, super I appreciate his channel, and I appreciate uh, one of the most recent, more recent interviews was uh, on a Titans of Tomorrow episode. So I thought that that was super cool that he came in, he 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 invested the time to look through this and kind of he's got some phenomenal risk management um, advice as, as well, being a much larger trader than I am. Um, I think he. Raha, I think trades like millions of dollars, but, um, yeah, just super grateful that he was able to come join. And that was a, just, a, a really fun one to make because after a year, I mean, gosh, I started ICT what October, 2022. So after like a year and a half, I've learned a lot in my failures. I've failed a lot. And, and so that was one thing that was kind of cool. Um, for those of you who had wondered about like some executions, what I did was on Friday's trading, I took this and um, I, I showed you like live, live limit order executions on this. And I talk you through exactly what am I looking for? Exactly what I'm doing when I'm solo trading by myself, just in the zone. Um, I'm showing you what I'm looking at. I'm showing you stop loss management, proper stop loss management. Um, so I'm showing you take profit levels and why, so that you can kind of see how I trade one of my favorite models, which is the market maker sell model. One of the most um, wonderful models to trade in my opinion. So if you haven't checked that out, it's definitely worth not speeding through if you're not confident on your executions yet. So I would recommend, it is a long one, hour and eight, but I give you, I think two different major, major trades. I give you examples of pyramiding. I give you examples of profit taking, and I give you examples of moving your stop loss up when you start to see things that aren't gonna go your way and why. So that video I thought was a really, really good one. And I'm glad I, I remembered to record when I'm trading on my own. Sometimes I don't remember to record. Um, uh, what is the video titled again? Um, WEF. Um, so this, I think you're referring, I'm not sure if you're referring to my videos, but one is my, my two videos were struggling with risk management and passing prop firm challenges. You can go to my channel and see it under videos or, or it's the learn live tape reading and how to get better at entering trades. Or if you can share the link for it. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so let me share the link for this one. I don't know if this is going to show up or not, but this is the live tape reading link. Let me see if that actually showed up. Uh, I'm gonna have to click onto this to see. Did that show up in chat? It did not. Okay. Uh, maybe I can put this. Maybe I can put this link in. Oops. Nope. Sorry. Give me a second here. <laughs> I'm trying to find it again. So. Hopefully you meant the live trading link. Let me see if I can put it directly in this chat or not. Uh, that's the live. That's my live trading link. Um, sorry. Let me. And then. This one. Above is live trading link. Yes, the last one. Yeah, the last vid. Yep, yep. This one is the gaps in trading video. Okay, cool. And of course, that was me studying some ICT. <laughs> I always have an ICT tab up to study. That was me going back to study price action model five. Um, so yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, good questions. WEF. Um, thanks stock trader. Oh, LP trades. Thanks. 
LP. Oh, me, it was with Top Step. Oh, okay, okay. LP trades. You were you were trading with Top Step. Yeah. Um. So, this is the problem I have with Top Step. Um, my friends trade with Top Step as well. Um, my problem with Top Step is that when you take a payout, they don't lower your, you know, trailing stop. They trail you forever. I think it's really annoying. Um, that's why I like Apex Trader funding. So, so like, and let me just go to Apex real quick here. I like the fact that there are um pa accounts if i can let me see if this will take me here nope that's a video uh let me try it again so i like that this uh profit goal if you go to the frequently asked questions i really like their frequently asked questions pa versus eval uh let's see pa trailing drawdown i think trailing drawdown there we go so this has a really good example and i i've made videos on this as well but like once you get past for a 50k account like once you get past fifty thousand dollars and one hundred dollars it'll stop trailing you right that's not the same in top step. So I don't know what, why people decide to go with top step. I think it's like a lot of people like really enjoy top step, which is totally okay. You know, if you enjoy trading top step, then that's totally okay. Right. Nothing against them. I just really enjoy apex because it forces you to be really good. It forces you to really be very disciplined, you know? Um, WEF, I'm not sure, but I think you can ask them to increase your daily loss limit if you have some buffer in your account. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's good to know. Um, yeah. Um, if you do trade, trade, you know, with top step, definitely let me know. Keep me posted. I'm interested in learning about it. I want to know like, you know, what your experience is with it. I have really enjoyed trading with apex. I mean, they are very professional they don't they 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 shy they want to find professional traders they don't want to find people who are always looking for lucky limp windfall wins right so i like them a lot um and i and i'll continue to trade with them too i mean i i just have had a fantastic time trading with them um and uh yeah yeah i i think that their sales really do help out greatly because the even the 80% off sale that's going on right now, like that makes an account $30 to control $50,000 worth of leverage, which is, okay, so generally for those that you don't know, if you are trading in an actual brokerage, like if you're trading in like an actual futures trading brokerage, the cost that you have to have like cold hard cash in the account to trade one ES contract, I think is, uh, actually, let me see. Uh, I think it was, um, what did I see? Maintenance margin. I think it was this one. So the actual amount you have to trade one E mini contract is at least eleven thousand, nearly twelve thousand dollars to trade one E mini, and then you need seventeen thousand dollars to trade one Nasdaq account. So the fact that you can trade almost close to ten in a fifty K account is ridiculous. They are giving you such good leverage in Apex. You can't find that at other brokerages that are truly futures trading brokerages. You might have like discount brokerage, but you're also going to have really bad stops too. So, so what I like about them is that you do get quite a lot with these types of accounts. I mean, a hundred micros, that's a lot to trade with. I mean, I'm only trading with two to 10 micros. 
So over time, I will hit that mark where I'm trading 10, but and, and maybe more too. But until that point in time, we are going to stay with 1% to 2% leverage, and that's it. So, all right, folks, well, it's 10 o'clock, so it's been fun hanging out with you. Um, and I realized I wasn't sharing my screen this whole time. Um, so for those of you, I, I totally apologize. I was not sharing my screen, um, but I was pointing to these videos over here and I wasn't sharing my screen. So thank you, WF, for pointing, making that, um, uh, bringing that up to my attention that I, I, I was, I was uh, not pointing to the correct videos there. So I apologize for that stream. I'll try to remember to do that um, in the coming, in the coming uh, videos. <laughs> I'll try to make, remember I'm actually not showing my screen. So, all right, everyone. So go get some rest now. You deserve it. Go drink some water, stay hydrated, and um, we will talk soon. Have a great evening, folks. Take care and good luck and have a good day, good week trading. Take care.